You may hear people talk about race car chassis as 25.3 or sometimes 25.2, 25.1, or throw out some number like that. You don't need to know all the details, but it's a good idea to have some knowledge of it so you don't sound like an idiot around your friends when they're talking about it. So today we're going to go over SFI specifications, specifically chassis specifications. As you probably guessed, the place to start is the SFI website, sfifoundation.com. And when you come down and look at specifications, you will find anything from tractor pulling to boat racing. And here we go. We're going to talk about drag racing chassis specifications. So specification is exactly that. They specify what you should have and minimum requirements for safety. And here you'll find uh, dragsters, even top fuel dragsters. You'll see funny cars, alters, roadsters, and full body door cars. So here are the different options under full body door cars. Uh, you can take a look at any of these, but you will notice that there is no link to click and just look at the uh, specification that has to be purchased or borrowed from a buddy, or of course your chassis builder will have this. So uh, for example, if somebody says my car is a 25.3 certified chassis that is a full body car with aftermarket body and shell tube and tube frame uh, or OEM body and basically what it comes down to is that is a 3600 pound maximum limit and it goes from 650 to 749 now obviously it can go slower than that but it's basically certified down to as quick as 650 um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take a quick look. Um, what I kind of want to point out here in the beginning is that, let's look at the NHRA rule book. You hear people, every time they see a funny funny car type cage in a car, call it a pro mod or a lot of tubes. Well, pro mod, of course, is a class in many sanctioning bodies, including NHRA. And if you look at this, this is the NHRA rule book. And you'll take a look down here and you'll go down to Let's see, roll cage. Chassis must meet SFI 25.1. So that is the requirement for NHA, NHRA Pro Mod, and I will say that that's not the only place that a 25.1 is used. Many radio versus the world car have this, things that look like what we call a Pro Mod. And if you come down, you will also see a similar thing in like Top Sportsman. So those cars are also similar in chassis design, and you'll actually see those have more of a difference but let's see here what they've got um all right here it is the frame all cars must use a full frame that meets sfi spec 25.1 2 or 3 that run 7 749 or quicker uh 750 and quicker so that's your that's where you're going to find these type of things so you actually look at the certification and find what class you're going to run what you want to fit into you're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, the SFI spec 25.1, uh, you'll see this has a J behind it. Now 25.1 is 25.1, but what they'll do is they'll revise it. So as they come up with changes to make them safer or um, have need for, for different types of changes or clarifications, they will revise it. Now if you always take a look at the paper spec that you have um, and make sure that you're on the current revision so that you meet all the requirements if you're going into a chassis build. Um, what you'll see is up here, you don't have to buy a new one if you're out of date or it's a newer revision. If you go to tech advisories, you'll see um, different specifications. Here's one right here. Uh, for example, this one I believe uh, details some more clarifications about um, repairs on the cage and also about the usually the transmission bar that goes across in between the center of the chassis and having it removable. So just double check um, if you have one that's older than the current revision just find out what has changed and these are not these don't have to be purchased you just simply take a look at them here and print them out or whatnot but you have that information to kind of update um, so yeah let's go ahead and take a look take a look at the uh, 25.1 Okay, so this is a 25.1 G that is not current. So we went back like we just showed and found out what it took to get it up to J and kind of added those to our book. But uh, this is what you'll see when you start out. Uh, basically, this says 25.1 is for full body car to chassis roll cage. And keep that in mind when we say roll cage, because once we get down to the diagrams, you'll see what we mean by that. Um, 
roll cage. It really is just outlining the safety portion of the chassis, uh, not not the you know the performance of it. Not you know it should be this long and it will react this good and the chassis will work great if it's designed this way. It is really just for safety. Um, and of course the disclaimer that this does not really keep you safe for sure and that there is no there is no um, guarantee that you will not die if you get into a crash however that it is it does conform with something that should be fairly safe if you have this um, it outlines the material you can use and that it has to be welded with uh, a TIG welding process and that you have to end up with a label on your chassis once it's complete so one of the main features of the specification is outlined here and this is where the, what they call variation in configuration so there's three actually i'm sorry four basic designs of the roll cage and it has to do with where the driver sits in relation to the main roll hoop uh bar number 10. Um, does he sit in front of it kind of on center a little bit behind center or completely behind the hoop and we'll just go ahead and head down here and um, there's a lot of different notes here about the way it can be constructed for example um, you know the upper bar can be like a halo or it can be you know two uh tubes that come down the a pillar and whatnot but let's get down to the diagrams here um First, we'll stop at this. This is the material list, and this shows each bar and what size it needs to be. So this will make a little bit more sense when we look at the outline. This is this document right here is one that you really flip back and forth a lot between the diagrams, the tube diagrams that we're going to get to here in a second, and just kind of checking each one off, making sure that as you build it, it meets all the requirements, and it also shows you, you know, what tube it is, and it tells you the optional notes. There's a lot. It feels like a lot when you're going through this because it's like, okay, if this, then look at this. If it if you do it like that, then you got to change this tube diameter. So it's like a choose your own adventure book, like bouncing around trying to figure this out. Um, I will say the best thing to do is if you're trying to tackle some of this on your own or build your own car, get a hold of your uh, chassis, your local chassis certification guy. Um, you know, usually your NHRA division uh, guy that comes around and, and uh, certifies chassis. And have him, you know, if you have questions, really bounce it off him because there are a lot of details I feel are pretty vague in this. Um, and, you know, leave a little bit of, you know, gray area. So, um, and I've also found that this 25.1 is missing some things that had to be clarified for me that are actually in other specifications. Okay, so here is figure A. So this is the first type or style that, um, that they show. So you'll look here that the main, this is hoop number 10, or I'm sorry, bar number 10, your main hoop. So you have this bar is pretty straight up and down. And then you can see all these vertical members right here are pretty straight up and down. So that when you get to where the driver sits, you can see that he's sitting in front of this main hoop. Obviously he will not be behind. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's just go ahead and look at figure B. Um, you can see here where some of these tubes on the back here kind of come back a little bit. So the driver sits back a little bit more. His helmet is a little bit more underneath this main hoop number 10. So you can still see this bar is the same, but these tubes kind of come back. Um, it'll be a little more clear. So as we go down from A, B, C, D, you'll see that this one even pushes back a little bit more. This figure C is the center of the driver's helmet is behind the main hoop. So what you'll see is just some differences in the tubes. Um, one thing to note is that all these tube diameters uh, are shown in color. So for example, everything in red is your inch and five eighths 083, which is gonna be your, you know, a lot of the members of this this cage, you know, the main, um, the main diagonal here for the driver so you can just you know you go through this and you just look at you know it's just color coded pretty simple um layout but you can you can go bigger than these tube diameters and wall thicknesses but you can't go smaller so even if let's say something is required as an inch and a quarter 058 um you can't say, well, I'm going to put, uh, you know, a bigger diameter with a smaller wall thickness. No, you have to meet at least the minimum tube diameter and wall thickness on this, um, you know, that's shown here in the diagrams. And then we get down here to D, and this is the one that says the entire driver's helmet is behind the main hoop. So you can see it's even further back. Um, and then you just kind of follow the certification. 
uh, or the, the specs here um, to get to where you can have a certified chassis. Um, there is a little bit of gray area, you know. Um, they show like this tube, um, the cross tubes here in green going across. Um, those don't have to be all the way the full length. There's some details about that. So there's there's a lot of little details. Um, and, you know, the reality is, is that some of these gray areas are going to be interpreted different by different inspectors. It's just the reality of how it works. Many people have been bitten by it. So that's why I always suggest get with your get with your guy that's your local chassis inspector. And if you have any questions, have him verify it, you know, make sure that everything is is on the up and up that you're not going to get to the end and say, oh, you've got to cut these tubes out because I'm not going to certify the chassis. And it does happen. Okay, so here is the next one, uh, figures E and F, um, outlining when you need the uh, the helmet bars, if they're required or not, and typical funny car cage designs. Um, as you get into some of the other uh, specifications with the heavier cars, you'll notice a few things like on the roof view, there'll be actually an X here instead of just the single bar. Those are some of the differences you'll see. Um, again, just some more different views to kind of outline how it is and then some floor uh, configurations. Uh, some of the key things about this are the fact that 6A, B, and C have to be in a line unless you have kind of some of this called almost a gusseted method here. Um, otherwise, they could just be straight across right here. And this is the 6C bar that uh, actually can be removable. And there's details about that uh, in the specification as well. Um, and then just a few more details about how uh, you can actually see the the 6C right there. So, um, and you know, multiple piece uh, red cross member, which is your number one. That is another thing to note that this is your number one bar right here. And then here's your number two bars. Oftentimes that's how a chassis builder is gonna start is with number one. And that's kind of the foundation of the chassis. And then the number two bars will go from there. So yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of the overview. It's about 17 pages and a lot of little details uh, of, you know, what you can and cannot do, uh, and, and how it has to be, uh, constructed for safety reasons. And that's one thing that people often notice is like, well, there's not really any more detail about what's in the front of the car or back of the car and whatnot. Um, but there is a little bit more detail on the 25.3. It does have some of the, the rear, um, X braces that come back off the top and then the rear frame rails. Excuse the uh, awesome artwork here. And lastly, if you come back to this page, uh, we were at drag racing chassis. If you come over to the drag racing, you will see a list of different uh, components. So anywhere from, you know, containment devices to wheels, fire suits, um, roll bar padding, uh, transmission shields, all those different types of things that you'll see like a little sticker on an SFI sticker. This will have a specification and mostly it kind of seems like these specifications are testing procedures, like what it has to meet for the testing requirements. Um, and then you will have manufacturers in here. So, um, for example, if you want to see, um, drag race drive wheels, for example, here's the specification 15.1. This establishes the procedures for testing and the requirements it has to meet. So you can look through those. You can geek out on Friday nights doing that. Um, and then if you look at manufacturers, you will see different manufacturers on this list. Um, good place to take a look and say, oh yeah, this person or this company makes wheels that meet the requirements. So you can feel a little bit, uh, a little bit of peace of mind that uh, you've got the right part. I mean, these things are supposed to be checked in tech. Oftentimes, these little details are not checked. Maybe in the higher classes they are. But, uh, you know, just a reputable company, I guess, is the important thing. So a good uh, resource to check yourself on uh, the components you're buying. So hope that uh, hope this helps you out. Um, hopefully it uh, cleared up a few things. And uh, we appreciate you tuning in. Thanks. If you have any questions, give us a call, shoot us an email, or check out the website. Also, check us out on these social media platforms. Like, share, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever it deserves. And thanks again for the support.